Chris, uh, how's it going? It's going. It's getting cold. How are people doing here? Like how? Uh, They're managing with what they got to work with. How many people, roughly? Twenty-eight. And is that day and night, Chris? Yeah. So they, uh, what are the problems you're having, or are there any? Uh, it's mostly just like a little family here, so it's like little spats between one another and uh, um, washing facilities and um, that's you know kind of trying to keep ourselves busy. I understand you had a homemade porta potty and it was taken out. Oh no, we have the homemade one still. We the uh, just in time was here. We had one delivered and it was removed. Oh, oh, so it was delivered and it was removed. Yeah. Because the infrastructure in Ontario didn't allow it. Yeah. Um, how long, getting cold weather, not yet, but I mean. Oh, it's cold at night. Don't, don't kid yourself. <laughs> what will happen when it gets really cold? Not too sure. Um, right now we got heaters and I have a wood stove, so. Um, I imagine I'll have a lot more people on the floor in my tent. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Fire department and police regularly check? Yeah, they have an hourly parade here. Every day? Or? Every day. Oh, is that right? <laughs> what do they do? They just walk around? Come here and walk the property, check things out. The security don't look through the encampment, though, do they? They stay behind the fence? They Most of the time. Sometimes they'll come through. They take pictures and whatnot. They're just doing it for reports. Um, see how things are changing, what's moving around, who's going where. Um, we're in the process of moving a bunch of tents from the lower laying land up to the higher lands because it's going to be a floodplain down there come winter time. Um, and then we got like I got a generator, so we got electric heaters. And... and you've always been good to talk to the bicycles that they recovered here. Okay, so there was two that were actually stolen, and the rest were just abandoned bikes that didn't that people had collected that didn't essentially belong to anybody, but they weren't they weren't stolen as well. They were just taken back to the police station that way. If by some chance they were in the past, people could come recover them. Or they were just taken back to give to donate to bikes. And talk a little bit about this. Like people people have a misconception of, of some things. Uh, so the bikes, a lot of people think that we're they're just stolen bikes or whatever. A lot of this stuff is dug out of a dumpster. Um, and they're pieced back together piece by piece. Like these are all bike frames and tires and tubes and cords, cables that will be used to build in the process of building another bike. You know, like it's. So it's using what is available to make it. They'll take five or six broken down bikes and make them into one usable bike. It's all about understanding. Yeah. Like really, it's all about understanding. Yeah. Like, see, the bikes will come into the go to go into the dumpster, and the rims will be like this. They just toss them away. Well, that's just got a bad rim, so they take the rim off, and then they utilize the frame or the cranks or the sprockets or the derailers, cables, reflectors, and piece it together to make it, it together usable. To make one usable bike. Are you getting a fair shake? Like, do you read social media? Do you read stuff like that? Like, I try and stay out of it because I'm quite passionate about this. And uh, I might say things I don't necessarily mean that's, that's in the heat of the moment. But uh, but how do you... No, a lot of people don't see what's actually going on here. And uh, that's, that's what people want to know. Like, what is actually going on? Like, it's just... we're, uh, we're just... Most of us are just displaced um, for one reason or another. And... Uh, yeah, like we're trying to make a change here for affordable housing and, and accessible housing. You started with the Division Street and that mm -hmm. hasn't come it's just, to any... It's grown since then. So Division Street closed, they condemned it, then they condemned Mattel, now they're working on Major Street, then they're going to work on John Street. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a, they're targeting Patty's houses. But 28 people didn't come from them. Like, as I say, there's, there's other people there's, from around five people here that didn't come from one of those houses. Is that right? Maybe. So, like they housed, we housed a lot of people. Uh, yeah, like yeah. There was, yeah, so there's Division Street has one, two, three, four, five bedrooms in it. Um, so you'd think there was five to maybe 10 if there was couples in it. Um, but we also housed a lot of the homeless people or unhoused people that were dealing with mental health issues and, and what have you. Um, 
we house them to come in and eat meals, do laundry, shower, um, shelter. So us not being there, those people are obviously now back on the streets. Um, there is, you know, I don't know if you know Rocky Barron. He passed away this year. His house was in a place for people that could drop into and shower and eat and rest if they needed to. Um, Pat Millar's place, his same thing. Um, so just we're a community of people that help each other and then we've all been displaced in one way or another. So now we're all into a community to help each other. I heard you saying people going by. Um, yeah, so they will try and antagonize us, uh, holler obscenities, uh, throw stuff at the tents. Uh, a couple tents have been cut, the signs have been cut down. Um, yeah. And talk a little bit about this, like you said, this is a garbage tent. Like, so talk a little bit about what this is. So, you know, there's 30 people here. Instead of having our garbage scattered around every, every resident, we uh, house it all inside this gazebo. And once a week, we take it to the dump, just like everybody else. There's no, uh, there's no roadside pickup here. Even if we bought garbage tags, they wouldn't pick it up. So we store it, like everybody else does, and then we take it to the dump at our cost. Are you guys taking the tent full of stuff too? Yeah, yeah. You are? Yeah, we'll take the, the, the contents inside. Contents inside. Yeah. 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 Oh. Uh, I guess your sister. I guess it would be your sister. And then, and then your brother? Yeah. yeah. So, her are yeah. mm -hmm. That's your mom? Yeah. So, Good, how are you doing? Good. Taking stuff. You want me to put on the door here? Yeah. What do you want from the community? Just, you know, do your donations as you can. And, uh, um, you know, it's, very, it's greatly appreciated for those that do. And that those that want to be naysayers, just stay away. Just leave us alone. Like, we're not harming you. And really, no one solution will solve anything. No, this is, it's going to be an ongoing thing. This is just the, the tip of the iceberg. This is so you're here for a while. Well, look at what it's grown into. It started off with one tent. How many now? Roughly? 15. Yeah, yeah. And growing? And gr well, it's growing, but it's getting colder now, so people aren't as apt to put tents up. But like, we've got tents inside of tents. So like, we have a heated tent. We have heaters and and whatever systems we have to stay warm. Blankets on blankets on blankets. So if people want to donate blankets, it would be appreciated. And I mean, we had a donation of bicycles there the other day, which was great. Uh, a gentleman came and brought five bikes. Uh, people bring by meals for us. That's great. It's greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, the community is doing a good job. Anything else?